Thank you for having me today. Greetings from Spain, from the sunny Barcelona. Uh, it's a great an honor. It's a great honor for me uh, to be here and to share with you uh, my and our expertise. Uh, and I hope that um, some things that I will share with you right now will make sense to you and to your business and to your promotion attempts and something. Um, again, um, I'm working as a chief global growth officer in High Factory, one of the leading influencer marketing uh, uh, agencies in the world. And uh, um, speaking about the influencer marketing itself, we do understand that this is one of the fastest growing um, advertising channels for many businesses and for gaming industry and as well. And uh, uh, when we were thinking about uh, the topic of my speech, we decided to make some kind of a homework for you to help you to avoid some mistakes uh, that can be made during your planning campaigns, and maybe some of your first attempts working with different influencers uh, for solving problems for you. So uh, we're going full gas and it's time to break free. And uh, I would like to start with uh, one of the most common myths that we have then. When we're talking about brands and uh, that they should partner with only with influencers who create content that is relevant uh, for their niche, it uh, actually doesn't make sense because usually your target audience has many more interests besides your product. So it's important to remember. And uh, another important thing is that Competition in your niche can be very high making and difficult to stand out. So we suppose and we advise you to um, first of all, focus on your audience and find influencers who are relevant, not to your product, first of all, but to your audience, first of all, and define categories that are vaguely related to your industry. So um, we have some case. It's a simple, casual, match-free mobile game with a target audience, female, 25 plus. There were some evident categories, uh, for example, family, lifestyle, fashion, and beauty, and some non-evident uh, categories, for example, mystery and horror. You can see the numbers, for example, the CDR and the conversion rate, and um, they were quite low, and the return of investments uh, in general, as well as the return of advertising spends uh, was uh, quite positive. So uh, take it to your note and... Um, uh, I think you have to focus on it when you're planning some campaigns. Um, another important point I would like to mention here now is that um, advertising should be native and not very obvious, but frankly speaking, uh, all of us do understand that uh, commercial is commercial and uh, we don't have to hide it at all, but uh, we have to do some things instead. For example, create eye-catching and engaging ads that speak to your audience. And we have to make sure that your ads tell a story, first of all, that is relevant to your story, uh, to your audience. And we have to take a creative spin. And uh, the most important thing is that uh, we have to leave uh, some space and influence uh, for influences for their creativity because uh, they do understand their audience uh, best of all. So uh, moving forward, um, I guess that's the most uh, important and my favorite topic in micro influencers are super effective. Uh, well, actually not because um, uh, usually micro influencers can reach a very low number of people and we have to understand it. Another thing uh, is that working with micro influencers is time consuming. So we suppose and we advise you to think in a different way. First of all, to partner uh, both with micro and medium sized influencers simultaneously. Uh, Suja, uh, choose a social media platform depending on your goals. We have a huge experience working with micro influencers and we have some do's and don'ts and I would like to share with you. Um, some expectations, for example, micro influencers are easy and fun to work with. Uh, not actually. 
because uh, they are very choosy. The level of responsibility is not very high. Uh, they often miss deadlines on a regular basis, tons of paperwork. So uh, we do have to remember it uh, when we are planning some media plans and campaigns using the micro-influencers as a core. Um, another important expectation is that small channels help to save budgets. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And the reality is that usually um, CPM tend to be at least 20% higher than then for channels with the average number of views. You can see the small table on the right uh, side of um, my slide right now. And you can see that uh, the CPM, for example, for the real views about the 50, thousand is more is about 500 bucks that's so too much uh moving forward um oh sorry um another expectation is that uh micro influencers have loyal high quality audience um um, the thing is that audience quality is quite questionable, uh, and uh, usually they have a low impact on the number of organic installs, uh, which is crucial for gaming business as well, but we'll talk about it later, definitely. And uh, moving forward, uh, another important myth is that brands should use different influencers for different campaigns. Working in the, in the agency, I do understand how it is important to uh, provide clients uh, different lists of influencers that, that can be used in different campaigns. But um, finding new influencers usually for every new campaign is time consuming and uh, too expensive for each side. And we suppose doing it, uh, it in another way, for example, work together with influencers and make sure that their voice is also heard. It's very much important. I've already mentioned that um, we have to provide them some space for their creativity because they know their audience well. And uh, also, if you see that uh, there is a sudden decrease in your performance, you can always stop it. We have a uh, quite representative case. Uh, it was uh, some kind of a mobile shooter with a audience, male 25 plus, and there were two waves of the campaign. And uh, we have made a decision together with the client uh, to uh, use uh, one more time uh, top 11 performers uh, after result analysis. And um, here you can see some table and the comparison between the campaign one, the wave one and the wave two. Uh, for example, the cost per install was um, below expectations, below 25 bucks. Uh, for the first campaign, it was about 20. And for the second one, it was about 24. So it makes sense to repeat some effectively working influencers. Um, another important point for me is creativity doesn't lead to high performance. I do remember when we were working about three, four years ago, we don't even had um, a standalone creative team inside our agency because we were not sure how to combine creative ideas with performance ideas, with special projects and so on, so on, so on. But we do have to understand and everybody does understand that brands sometimes exhaust their usual performance channels capacity. And uh, we have uh, to focus on uh, different ideas, trying unusual ideas to showcase your brand personality, launch different channels. And I have provided some cases to you just to show uh, all the variability that uh, we can have uh, using huge creative ideas uh, working with influencers. Um, but before the cases, I would like to pay your attention that there are many types of creative projects with influencers you can make. You can start with simple uh, collaborations. You can make music videos. When you're quite experienced, you can miss a mix offline and online activations as well. Use in-game celebrity endorsement and so on, so on, so on. But just to show you a few, for example, Mr. Beast and uh, his uh, dedicated, unique videos, ideas for Brawl Stars and uh, tremendous results about uh, 243 million views. Or um, one of my favorites, uh, Moxo created real life fire breathing dragon for the raid. 
Shadow Legends and uh, earned about uh, 1 million views as well. And one of my favorites as well is TBO makes it to two with a Raid Shadow Legend champion. And um, it was an outstanding case by all means. And speaking about the mixture of offline and online, you can, for example, launch the uh, official TikTok challenge, for example, for a meek arena dance like me. So um, another uh, important point I would like to uh, underline is that Twitch. Usually when we are talking about Twitch, uh, we do believe that Twitch is not good for mobile games promotion and mostly focus on desktop. But we have to understand that Twitch users are interested in games, and this is some kind of the epicenter of the gaming community itself. And it has many um, advertising features and instruments that brands uh, can use and uh, in their campaigns uh, to make better performance. So we suppose that um when you use twitch you have to start using qr codes to convert desktop traffic into mobile uh also we have to introduce animated widgets and interactive counters to increase engagement rates and so on so on so on and partner basically with influencers who are streaming often about mobile games because it makes sense um another important point about uh bonuses and um, some motivation for audience. Uh, many think that if your campaign is performing well, a small bonus can attack more attention and increase conversion, and it's true. And uh, we, uh, we have uh, to provide some additional value working with influencers for the audience. So bonuses can encourage potential users to install the game via creators personal link instead of going to the app store. And uh, here is the short comparison just to uh, show what I'm talking about. Uh, we have uh, two campaigns that promoted the same product with the same geo, same game genre, and etc. And uh, here are some basic and the most important media metrics, for example, reach clicks. And you can see that numbers differ greatly um, when we use bonuses and we do not use bonuses as well. So it makes sense. So uh, think about it when you will be planning some campaigns, maybe to add something extra to the audience. Um, about the content creators and the CPM itself, um, everybody tries to lower the CPM um, and uh, uh, sometimes campaigns with influencers whose CPM is higher than the market average can be very effective. And we have to keep it in mind. And uh, first of all, we have to pay attention to the content quality and the audience relevance instead of focusing only on CPM. And also we have to take some into account that high quality channels are usually more expensive than the average quality ones because the because of the production cost itself. So um, for example, there are simple examples providing uh, my thoughts about this because uh, you can see that some kind of a U uh, average US CPM is 20, 25 bucks. And using the higher CPM about 33 brings and makes more sense. Uh, for example, the return of the investments for the Creeparian was about uh, 476%. Uh, moving forward, uh, mm, the important thing, uh, how to evaluate um, uh, the campaign results. Uh, many of us think that uh, we have to do it just after the campaign ended. But all advertising campaigns have a delayed effect, and we do have to remember about it. And sometimes organic results can be influenced by a paid campaign as well. So. Um, my recommendation, our recommendation, is to take a period about of six months uh, to track the effectiveness of the overall campaign. And also, you have to keep an eye on your app stores ratings and uh, take into account the campaign's delayed effect. Um, here is the uh, tree uh, that shows the, the most important things you have to focus analyzing your campaign on each stage uh, uh, and uh, in a, each amount. For example, uh, you can start with some basic uh, measurements, results via links, organic traffic, delayed performance, and so on. But 
Don't forget about user-generated content. Uh, don't forget about building uh, long-term uh, re uh, relations. Uh, uh, don't forget about users' retention and rare uh, re uh, engagement as well. And um, also we have some cases, for example, a cross-platform RPG uh, with the audience, a male 25 plus, and uh, you can see uh, the effect of the campaign, the key media metrics, for example, the measurement was about uh, 14 days uh, later um, after the campaign ended. And then you can see the increase after the six months, for example, uh, the CPM decreased and uh, clicks uh, plus 15% as well as the installs plus 16% or so, uh, so on. So uh, give your time, give your time to yourself ju just to analyze it on the um, bigger time period. Uh, start from the uh, end of the campaign and then to the six months, it makes sense. And um, another thing that um, I would like to discuss, it's quite a tricky moment for myself because I'm working in the agency right now, but many believe that influence marketing agencies are overrated and lead to additional costs. Um, sometimes shit happens, yeah, and sometimes it can cost you extra without any additional effectiveness. And uh, But uh, if you plan uh, to partner uh, with some influencer marketing agencies, you have to focus on some key points. Uh, first of all, you have to ask about their client stories and uh, what helped them to succeed. Um, we do recommend uh, to check the performance marketing skills uh, when you're working with uh, any influencer, not only influencer marketing agency. Uh, also, you have to check uh, what uh, softs they are using, maybe some uh, unique technologies that uh, they have with the, uh, and so on, because it makes sense that will help you uh, to provide a fruitful uh, communication and uh, to uh, provide good media plans and good strategies uh, uh, for you. So um, I don't have enough time, so I'll be ready uh, to ask your questions here right now or maybe later. But um, I do suppose that don't settle for average and let's do epic shit together. Thank you for listening. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm done. Hello. Okay. Thank you so much, Michael. And not Dash. Apologies for that. Um, does anybody have a question for Michael? I know he's not here. We can't see his lovely face, but um, does anybody have a question on the floor? Hey, here we go. Ah, oh, that's much better. Hello. Um, does anybody have a question for, for Michael about influence marketing from the floor? It's not, not over. Well, do we have any from the, uh, in the, in the group? What's the one thing? Oh, there's a Q&A there. There is a Q&A. Can tech people open the Q&A? Can you click the button that says Q&A so we can see? Because I can't see it from here. Yeah. Can you see the Q&A, Michael? I can't yeah, for companies who have never used Influencer, where do you even start? How do you select go, yeah. who's right for the company? Uh, well, uh, the first point is always some kind of a marketing analysis. We do have to understand uh, about your product, about your game, about your audience, about your expectations. And then uh, there will be several approaches on different budgets, on different uh, periods. And then we'll discuss together uh, what makes sense to make the first step, because there is no uh, universal answer uh, where we have to start. It may be TikTok, it may be YouTube, Twitch, uh, or everything together. So. Uh, there is no unique solution uh, and it always takes time to think and to uh, provide the most relevant solution. So, Okay, awesome. I think on that note, we're probably, gonna, um, we're probably going to say uh, thank you and, and, and farewell. It's a shame you can't be here. I would love to be in Barcelona. My, my, I'm going there this summer, so maybe I'll drop in and say maybe hi. Maybe next time. Thank uh, you. <laughs> yeah, I'll pop in and say hi. Thank you so much, Michael. And, thank uh, you. Thank you for having site. me. Fantastic. Okay.